focused on transportation uh, with canals and, uh, and is really part of not only the city's transportation network but part of its indu industrial heritage. So the city is very much connected to, uh, to its waterfront. Um, those, they, those canal areas were, were, in, were filled in, um, at least the central area was filled in in the late 60s, early 70s. And that's the start of some planning for what this waterfront could be for the community, a different waterfront. So in 1977, or at least finished in 1977, the process started in 1973, there were three waterfront plans or three plans prepared. And they actually covered very, three very distinct districts. So there was a plan for Lamaru Park, or what we call Lamaru Park now. It was not called that at that point. There was a plan for the Grace Creek Conservation Area and there was a plan for Gaydon Park. This happens to be the one that, um, that, uh, that is the Lamaru Park at that point called the Canal Land Study, by the way. And many of the things, are, some of the things that you would see out there in the park today that you take for granted had their, had their beginnings in this plan. So uh, the council of the day tried to implement those plans. Grace Creek uh, plan moved along, as you see it. That's partly in the city and partly in the township. As I said, the Lamaru Park and Gaydon Park, and that's at the time when Gaydon Park came into came into being. Um, and those plans were well implemented, moved along, but there was a recognition in the in the middle 1980s, 1987 or thereabouts, that um, the three distinct plans didn't cover the entire waterfront, and there were many issues on waterfront and waterfront planning that that, that should look at the entire waterfront. So there was a. Um, uh, there was an approach to do a complete waterfront plan, and by complete meaning all the way from the west end of Gaydon Park all the way to Grace Creek. And that was worked on by, um, by a, a committee of staff, a committee of public agencies, a committee of representative, representatives, and um, uh, led uh, the leadership of, um, of then Council of Chuck Shalwa. And there was a 1989, started in 1987, with the adoption of a 1989 waterfront plan. So, uh, and that was the first plan for the entire waterfront. Um, by the time we got to number 2007, a lot of that plan had been implemented. Um, all the things that were, uh, were able to move forward were implemented. So the, um, the waterfront committee of, of that day um, updated the waterfront plan. And I think one of the things that we've described that is that plan, the 2007 plan, is kind of evolutionary, not revolutionary, because this plan of process is, is, a, is a process in, in uh, in time and um, uh, it deals with continuous improvements to the waterfront. So if we go to the next slide. So um, the, the, the one thing I do want to point out is that um, the areas of the waterfront that we have are very distinct. There are many areas that have very particular distinct characteristics. So in the, in the, um, in the 1989 plan was the first time it looked at uh, establishing different districts on the waterfront and there were five areas and I'll show you a map of that in just a second. But essentially, those five areas and the revising the content, it looked at projects that have been implemented. So obviously, things that have been implemented don't need, no longer need to be in a plan. Um, and, and looked at where it had made progress. It also looked at um, the things that were in the 89 plan that, for whatever reason, may not have gone forward. And kind of tested the practicality of those things. I don't want to focus on any particular, but some things that might have been looked at in the 89 just for a variety of reasons didn't move forward. It could be budget issues, it could be that, um, that some of the issues deal with land ownership couldn't proceed or any number of reasons, but, but if there was something that was no longer deemed practical, the committee looked forward and didn't, uh, didn't deal with that. It also tried to look at new influences because from 89 onwards there had been <coughs> some changes, the most significant of which was in the early 2000s, the, the concept of a so-called all-Canadian seaway on the north side of the uh, St. Lawrence was abandoned by the federal government. And that is, that starts the discussion about the bridge can come to a low level, and also starts the discussion about the future of the canal lands and uh, further west. So the committee also tried to look at what were the new influences, for example. It started to look at whether the, um, the, the canal at west represented an opportunity for a uh, for a recreational uh, a canal. It also, there was also significant public consultation at that point, again, by the five particular districts, and then one that looked at overall kind of overall issues. So here's some of the things that came from the 2007 plan, and you would recognize them out there if you're, uh, if you're a user of some of these decisions. <coughs> the splash pad um, as, a, as a feature came into, came into being, together with washrooms and 
and that provided a, a long sought after um, feature in the park to have some washrooms. It also provided a concession facility. So that really is three, kind of three projects in one that created a center of activity. There were a variety of further bike path improvements and accessibility improvements, some of which are relatively minor, but, but, rel but do provide good accessibility. For example, at the bottom of Bedford Street, of York Street, uh, and Cumberland, some of the connectivity between the urban area and the park was not very good, so there was some crosswalks built. Uh, some rest stops were built in um, along parts of the bike path. One project that's currently being completed just outside our window here is, is a, an, uh, an improvements to areas behind the band shell and behind the civic complex. Um, there were kind of a jumbled set of paths that have been, that have been put together over the years that put bikes access to the bike path all in the, uh, to the band shell all in the same kind of general area. So there's some separation of that, provides handicap access and parking to deeper into the park. So people who need to get to the, to the park in the central area of the park by vehicle or with, uh, with access can use that. Um, the Cotton Mills redevelopment, which has encouraged the plan and encouraged the city's official plan is ongoing. And there are certain projects um, for, for improvements in Gaydon Park scheduled for the fall of 2012. So, again, a couple of quick pictures. There's a splash pad, there's a building that contains the washrooms, change room, and the concessions for the splash pad. That's a shot just of, uh, of, of the improvements that are happening in behind the band shop. So, um, now we're going to just move to kind of the focus of the area that, we're, that, that, that is really the subject of uh, today's discussion, and that is, um, I just want to kind of highlight what the 89 and 2007 plans say about the land's use of the complex. So I discussed before that the 89 plan really talks about the area being developed in a, a kind of campus of primarily recreational buildings. And that has been largely implemented. The 2007 plan, uh, as, it, as it was adopted, really assumes that the land uses out there are relatively stable. And by that, I mean there, there are, uh, immediately east of here at least, um, the baseball diamonds, the aquatic center is built, the curling club is out there, so there was a relatively stable land uses in the immediate vicinity of, uh, of this building. But the 2007 plan does focus on the former oil tanks land and suggests that that should be a development site. And by development, I mean in terms of urban development. It did the waterfront plan 2007 shows a, a, a stylized uh, residential set of buildings on that on that site. And the area we generally call Lookout Point, or, um, which is the area south of Bergeron Lane, the area where some of you might recognize was the uh, location of the police club, as it was known at one point, a high area that looks out, out over there. The 2007 plan talks about that as being kind of future park space and related improvements for access, it takes advantage of views up and down the river and really provides some kind of public, further public open space there. In many ways, if there was a development on the oil tax land, that would be the kind of the front door or the front setting of the of, the, of that development in front of the, uh, the leading to the uh, St. Lawrence River. Um, I just want to spend a couple of seconds talking about waterfront planning in, in, in the big broader context of the city's official plan. The city has an official plan which deals with planning and development strategies for the entire city, not only the waterfront but all of the neighborhoods, all of the, deals with many, many subjects, uh, uh, planning for heritage resources, um, certainly land use and uh, those kind of issues, housing issues. But the, the city's waterfront uh, the official plan does set out some uh, broad framework for waterfront and establishes some broad goals and policies. But the waterfront plan, it, it recognizes the waterfront plan is much more focused in, in, in the, than the official plan can be and lays out uh, a, it, it, and it's used as a key tool for kind of further actions. And the official plan and zoning that's in place now really reflect uh, approaches and in the area east of the complex designates the zone much of that land as open space. And there are some drawings that we've seen in the, there are around the room that show some of the background information. One of those has got the zoning on it, so we can talk about this. So I just want to kind of uh, close off with, with some discussions of our, the area that we'll talk about. This, as you would know it, this is Lamarue Park in terms of its very active area. <coughs> the is located here. The quiet center is here. And the current pub is just off this photo. So the discussion really is about <coughs> possibilities for development in this area. And as you'll see on the, on the questionnaire, areas east of that as well. So 
That's my kind of overview very quickly of uh, waterfront.